Thank you, Jesus. Lord, shock us tonight. Shock us with the gospel. Shock us. Shock us. Shock and awe. The God of wonders. The God of wonders. Shock us. Shakaraba boshke deshke 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 deshke. Ha 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 Hey ha ha ha. Ho ho ho. He he he. Let's practice. Ha ha ha. Ho ho ho. He he he. Let's just uh, speak in tongues for a bit. Shika, bamba, bamba, yo, 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 yo. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, he, 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 he. Realms of glory. Shaba, lamba, dera, bara, boro, 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 bere, 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 bara, 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 ba. She, be, 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 be. Shana ma shake ma shake take o mo shake ma shake ma shake yeshke yeshke shike be ba 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 bo 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 ha ha hey shire bere 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 ha 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 Ho 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 shiki be 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 shana mana 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 ho ye ke desh ke desh ke dash ke de shama na da de 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 ha 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 Jesus, <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on. Sheria ba shoko mo sheke ma sheke ma shoko mo sheke ye. Kababa shoko robo bo siki ye de de ma shoko robo bo siki ye de be de be de be. Ho ha 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 she ha
Yes. Oh, there's a sound that's attracting heaven. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. Release your sound, release your sound. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. My yeah, yeah, yeah. My yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Attracting heaven, there's a sound that's attracting heaven. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. Release your sound, release your sound. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. Release your sound, release your sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, come on, wake up, wake up, wake up. Put your head in the sunlight, put your head in the sunlight. Wake up, wake up. Put your head in the sunshine, put your head in the sunshine. Wake up, wake up. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. Wake up, wake up, wake up. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. There's a sound that's attracting heaven. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Oh, your face in the sunlight wake up wake up ha hey yeah 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 she got up i see yeah. she got here my see yeah. oh yeah oh yeah Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, yeah, come 
Kumaye, Kumaye, Yamashike. Kumaye, Kumaye, Kumamashike. Oh, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Humane, yeah, Humana, yeah, yeah. Humaye, Jesus, shika ba 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 ba, ha 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 ha, shiki ria ba ba, shiki mashki deshki. Wow, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hey, ha, hey, ha, hey, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Shaba ba 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 ba. Shake it, baby, 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 baby. Oh yeah, you my yeah. Ah. Oh. 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 That's it. Put you know, put your hand on someone if you can. Shiba da ba 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 ba. Higher and higher. Woo! 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 Ha! 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 Ya ki mama shike da mashke deshke dashke deshke deshke. Hey! Wow, 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 wow. Shabaramba bomba shika mashke deshke raba shunga banga denge denge denge. He mama shike me mama shoko mama kete mama kara shima na makiti mashke deske doske deske deske ho mama ki yere ha mashiki yere babo ba shiki ye shana manda ramba bombo 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 bembe 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 ho 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 Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> yes, 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 
Yes. Holy, 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 ha. Yes, Lord, yes. I don't know if I can walk around with this microphone or not. Can I? Yes, I'm just going to walk around. Shaka ba 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 Hey Hey Come on keep singing keep singing keep singing engaging Ha. Do you know what I mean? You know, Scripture says when you speak in tongues, you speak mystical secrets. We're speaking mystical secrets. Because sometimes your mind is not where it should be. So you have to bypass the mind. It says the peace of God that surpasses or bypasses understanding. And sometimes you've got to engage in a realm of energy and frequency. And that's where you get life and immortality is in frequency. But frequency doesn't come through intellect. Or to quote scripture, the natural mind cannot receive the things of the spirit. It's foolishness to it. So your mind has to just rest and your spirit starts to move in a way that's beyond thought is flow. You move in flow. And flow is the higher consciousness self of who you are. Be of the mind of Christ. Be of one mind. And you start to move from a place of, of almost um, rest in your thoughts and receptivity for infusion. And then you live from infusion. And that's the realm where... Knowledge flows, cardiognosis flows, infused knowledge flows from operating in heart coherence, is called. And when you speak in terms, you go into a state of heart coherence, where is your optimum state of health and being, where you form a synchronistic system where your heart starts to take predominance. It sends a signal up to your brain. This is all maths and science. I teach on this. It, you send a signal to your brain from your heart. Your heart sends 10 times more signals up than it gets down. It controls your hormones. It's the center of your being. As a man thinks in his heart, it has 40,000 neurons in it. It's called the mini brain now. Sometimes when people have had heart transplants, they've had memories implanted in them. They solved a murder case through a girl having dreams of the person that got murdered and could recognize the face because they had the memory encoded in the heart. One woman, had, her son had a heart trans, her son died and his heart went in this other guy. 20 years later, the mother heard that guy speak and knew it was his son's heart by the sound of his voice. So your heart is a thinking being. It's more than a pump. And as a man thinks in his heart, so, but the heart lo- is where the love hormone is produced. And when people say they love someone, it's with their heart. And when you ask someone if they're a good person, they say they've got a good heart. And if you ask children to draw a person's center, it's their heart. And every single religion's got the symbol of the heart, the burning heart. 
the heart chakra. In different religions, they have different language for the thing that out of the innermost being flows. When you go into flow, you go into higher consciousness, and your brain submits to the heart, and it forms a heart coherent state where the rhythm of your of your heart and your brain come into synchronicity, your blood pressure, your body, all come into what's called optimum flow state, where they all synchronize. And your heart rate variability becomes smooth rather than jagged. Then your hemispheres start connecting, and within 20 minutes, they're full of, of particles of light and connectivity. And then you start moving in, in higher consciousness, or the mind of Christ. And that's when you get mystical secrets, like all eternity in a sunbeam, you're sunbathing. <laughs> but you have to go through that state to engage that realm. And lots of people don't know that, but we need to discover that again. We need to discover how to be mystical. Anyway, just a thought. Well, I haven't got much time left. I've already used up most of my session. But I'm happy engaging the spirits because we've had words, words, words. And we need spirit. That's what John Scotland's ministry was about all those years. He was saying all you want is words, words, words. He'd be drinking. See, it's the spirit of life who quickens your mortal body. It's the spirit of life. The life-giving spirit will quicken your mortal body. The letter kills, but the spirit brings life. For the law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ has set me free from the law of sin and death. So it's in the spirit. It's the same spirit who, who raised Christ from the dead will also with him quicken, bring to life, refresh, replenish, and restore your body. So we have to be a company of people that begin to live in the spirit because it, we can't have the spirit and then not the spirit because if you disconnect from it you disconnect from source or i'll, I'll have, have uh -huh. it's called abiding abiding in the spirit or praying in the spirit at all times so you start to live in the spirit at all all times you're praying in the spirit at all times you, or to put it another way you're in the name because the name is a strong tower. It's an ascension technology. So you're living in the tower of ascension, fortified and locked away in the name. And from there you pray. And then in that name, every knee bows. So there's a realm of authority and government because you're seated higher in Christ, above all principalities and powers, and the catalyst for that is a choice where you set your mind on things above. Or it actually says heart, your thoughts, your emotions, your intention, your whole being. Set your mind on a realm above. For you're already seated in Christ. In heavenly places. In lots of realms. You're already multidimensional. But you choose to live here when you allow your thoughts to tether you here. So you untether from your thoughts, or let me put it another way, be transformed by the renewing of your minds, or untether from the cares and worries of this world, which choke the seed. So the seed's in you, and that seed is incorruptible, according to Peter, immortal and incorruptible, and it's the power of an endless life. It's the order of Melchizedek. Now, the order of Melchizedek, unlike any other priesthood that's ever exists, because of one major factor, it says that all the priests died. And they'd have to keep having a new priesthood over and over again. But then now it's a new priesthood. That we are being co-revealed in the same life as Jesus Christ. And what life as Jesus says? It says the order of Melchizedek comes in the power of an indestructible life. Because in the Melchizedek order, death has no framework. Because it's from another creation, it says. There's now a tabernacle that comes from another creation without father or mother so it's pulled out of the timeline of genetics. 
is pulled out of the system of genetics that's framed up death and decay, and then now is born from a place where there is no father and mother, and it's in perpetuity, for whoever believes in me will not perish, but have the power of everlasting life. Perish means decay. So hidden in the gospel are promises that are bigger than we've ever preached them. Listen to this quote from Bill Johnson. Everything in our account in Christ is beyond our wildest dreams. But we can't make a withdrawal if we don't know what exists. I dare to believe there's a company of people who are going to make a withdrawal on the spirit of life. Because there's a light of life. It says, arise and shine. What were we doing? Going up into higher consciousness, going into the mind, going up into higher realm. Arise and shine. What is light? It's the light of life. With you is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Those who've walked in the valley of the shadow, shadow of death. So death, decay, is what covers the nations. So the gross darkness is the shadow of death. And what will make nations come to the uprising is life. So it will arise, shift consciousness, move into the above where there is no framework for it. Where we start to function from the order of Melchizedek in the power of an indestructible life which is all that Paul talked about in Hebrews. So the gospel takes us beyond sin and death. It takes us beyond sin and death. See, wow. Why is it we've never preached that in the church? We preach you could be saved from sin. Come out the front and he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But it's the law of sin and death. It's the law of sin and death. They're, two, they're a couple. They're an ugly couple. <laughs> and what we've done in the church is we've broken up with sin. And we've said, sin, you're innocent. But we haven't completed the circuit to make us Enochian or like Elijah or the Oro Melchizedek. Now, some in, I was reading one of the Hebraic books. When um, Enoch ascended, they believe hundreds of thousands ascended with him. Originally, there were 800,000 people with him when he said he was going to go up. And he waited seven days and some of them left. But when he went, a whole group of them, a couple of hundred thousand, went with Enoch and bypassed death by faith. So faith kept Enoch from dying. Now Enoch is a pattern of us because he said in his book, the, the life I've lived and the things I've experienced are not for my generation, but for one in the far distant future. And he saw a day where there would be shining ones. That he said they would have the, the fragrance of the tree of life in their bones. They'd have the fragrance of the tree of life in their bones. And he saw our day and he said, I, I walk with angels in the life I lived. And he's the seventh from Adam. And scripture specifically says he's seven because seven is completion. Seven is the end. Seven is divine. Seven is the end times. The end times picture is somebody like Enoch that begins to move in the power of an endless life. Not by law because he did it even before law. And he broke the rules, by the way. He wasn't supposed to be allowed in Eden. There was a cherubim with a sword. He got in. How did he get in? Through love. Love breaks the rules. Love is stronger than death. Love is stronger than the grave. It's stronger than principalities and powers. It's stronger than angels and demons. It's stronger than heaven and hell. Love is stronger than death itself. And because of love, it says he, in one translation says, Enoch enjoyed God's favor despite Adam's fall. There is a company of people who will enjoy God's favor despite the fall. So the fall doesn't have a reference for you because you live in favor. You live in favor in the power and spirit of Elijah. Elijah didn't think death was a good idea. Enoch didn't see death. And they lived in the power of an incorruptible life. And even Moses under the covenant, it says in, in Colossians that he had the covenant, of, he had the ministry of condemnation. How about that, having a ministry of condemnation? Who's going to pick that one? A lot of pastors, not going to lie. It says, even under the ministry of condemnation, so the Lord himself, Paul, is calling the old covenant the ministry of condemnation. He says, even under that, they said they couldn't look at Moses' face because of the glory of a condemning ministry. Paul then says, how much more then will the ministry glory be of that which give life an ongoing life. So one's faded, but one is the power of an endless life. That's what it's all been about. I put before you life or death. 
But it says in the Old Covenant, if you cling to the Lord, you'll have his life in his length of days. The word there, cling, is to back. It means to entangle yourself and infuse yourself into oneness. That's what Moses did. Moses was so full of life, he didn't start his ministry till 80. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. We are. In 80, the gematria, and the symbol of that in Hebraic is pay. Pay means the voice or oracle that speaks. So in Hebraic culture, you become the oracle at 80. I've read this in the rabbinical books. At 80, you become an oracle that speaks. That's when Moses started his ministry. At 120, he's so full of life now that it says his eyes are renewed, his strength is renewed, Caleb's strength is renewed, and that's under a covenant of condemnation. So we're breaking with the story that we've been told by religion because religion is the cult of death. This might seem like it's contradicting what we've been taught in Sunday service, that when you believe in Jesus, you'll go to heaven when you die. That contradicts fully Jesus' definition of salvation. He says, whoever believes in me, well, I am the door. They will go in and out, find green pastures, and be saved. In other words, you'll become a dimensional shift in being that goes into the green pastures. What's the green pastures? It's Psalm 23. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He, he pours oil on my head. He fills my cup till it overflows. He prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. And then I will go out no more. I am permanently there. And love and goodness are following me all the days of my life. And I'm dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. So I'm never leaving. Yeah. Yahweh. Yahweh. Wow. Wow. So, like Bill Johnson said, I love Bill Johnson. I love Bill Johnson. Never met him. I don't know if he's a, he doesn't even know who I am. But I keep quoting him because it gives a kind of authority to my messages. <laughs> it makes them credible. So he said this, repentance, he defines repentance as this, a sustained change of thinking about the nature of reality. How about that? And he says this, we've repented enough to be saved, but not enough to see the kingdom. And that's true. And I tell you what, I'm repenting. Bob Jones said there'd be a lot of repentance to break open immortality on the earth. In one of his last messages in Bethel, he said, some of you here will not see the grave to those young people. He said, this is coming on the timeline. Life and immortality is the future because it's already been written in 2 Timothy 1.10. Now this grace has been made apparent by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who destroyed death, obliterating all of its effects on our lives and opened up the possibility of a life that never ends. Life and immortality. 2 Timothy 1.10. Paul was radical about the gospel. He took the gospel to the natural conclusion. The natural conclusion is this, is that the logic of love is life. Jesus himself said in John 10.10, 10, I came. He said, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Kill, steal, destroy, bad. <laughs> Say bad. It's quite obvious, isn't it? Kill, steal, destroy. I came that you might enjoy, enjoy, enjoy life. Well, what's the word for life? There's Zoe, which is the quality of life that God himself has. As if that's not enough, he goes, life in abundance till it overflows. He uses the word perisos, which means superfluous and beyond any need you'll ever have. It's when, the, it's not a trickle, it's a flood. I came that you might have life, my life, because you're in union with me, and then a life that's overflown. So you become a life-giving spirit, because the first Adam had a spirit, but the second Adam, which is the blueprint and pattern of our design, is became a life-giving spirit. And as we born the image of the man of dust, so now we will bear the image of the heavenly man. See, the Lord is progressive in everything he does. If this is some of you are saying that God can't progress it past where he's progressed it, look at history. Or let me quote scripture to the increase of his government and shalom. Don't you just love shalom? The shin, the consuming shin, the fire that consumes and ascends you. 
into the Lamed, where you are the lightning struck by living lightnings of revelation, the heart that's taught, Lamed, to become the Mem, the waters, the living frequency of life. So you become living waters. All of that's encoded in Shalom. Shalom means order over chaos. In the burning fire of his desire, a heart that's struck by living lightnings will become a frequency that brings life. Shalom, shalom. And it's the God of shalom that crushes Satan. Under your feet. Yeah. Wow. Arise, your light has come. Shine on, you crazy diamonds. In Christ, you're a new creation. Uh, whoa. Uh, you guys been challenged by the gospel? I am. Uh, let it scandalize death out of us. Wow. Wow. Wow, so we will come in awe to the Lord and His goodness in the last days. And in those days, they'll come trembling with awe to the Eternal One and rediscover His goodness. We've forgotten. We've been bewitched by Zeus cult. <laughs> Jesus. The temple. Jesus Himself said there'll be no more temple. Why then have we got temples? I love the woman at the well. The woman at the well is like almost all of immortality and everything's encoded. He says, if you take this drink, and he's on the outside to the people who should never have it, where they haven't got the rules, they can't go to the temple, and they're messed up, and he's saying, if you drink the drink I give you, then out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. And then she says, don't we have to go to the temple to get this? He says, I tell you the truth, the time's coming where you won't go there. But you will all worship me in in spirit, in truth. We keep trying to make a cult called Christianity where you're either in or out. But the spirit was poured out in Acts 2 on all flesh. There was a global consciousness shift, a global invasion. He's going to continue because he's going to keep coming. Don't need no persuasion for glory invasion. (laughs) Until what? The knowledge of the glory of the Lord. When what's the glory? It's his goodness. Because he said, he said, Moses said, Show me your glory. And he said, I'll make my goodness pass in front of you. So the knowledge of God's goodness is going to cause our bodies to tremble at his goodness. And we will come in awe and wonder, and it says, all the nations, Psalm 22, verse 27, all the nations and all the families of the Lord will turn and what? Remember. Remember. Not discover. They will remember it because they are Aleph down, which means God's blood, Adam, that they already carry the frequency of the divine (laughs) within them. And Jesus came to restore what was lost, and he's the way, the truth, and the life. And we're going to see what that means, the way to shift dimensions, the truth, the revelatory realm of wisdom with unsearchable riches of knowledge, and life. Life, enough life to recode the DNA of animals so that lions eat straw. Someone's going to do genetic impartation, and the lion will lie down with the lamb, and the snake will not sting children. So animals are included. They're not coming to the Sunday service. (laughs) At least not yet. Here, look, there's a bear here. (laughs) We're getting there. And the bear's the most whacked one here right now. (laughs) So that's a bit of a sign. Bit of a sign. Whoa. So we all come in tremor and see that their rise is now... I'm like five minutes away from finishing. 
In the likeness of Melchizedek, there rises another priest. We have another priest, one priest to end all priests. It's over, it's over, it's over, the empire is over. We might want to resurrect the hag, but she's over. We broke up with her. It says in Romans 7, we used to be married to her. It was a bad marriage, sin and death. We were married to them. So Paul says, how do you get out of it? You have to die. You know, when a marriage is that bad, the only way out is dying. (laughs) That's the language Paul uses. And he says, well, this is the good news. He says, when you died in Jesus, you've died fully with him from the law of sin and death. You broke up with your old husband. You're not married to your old husband. They got no claim over a corpse. He says this, how can sin find expression in a corpse? Another translation says, we who have died to sin, how can we breathe its air any longer? Because you don't need to breathe when you're dead. Then he takes the logic to another step. Now you've been raised so that you may marry another. That you might marry another. So his life is your life. His strength is your strength. His name is your name. His home is your home. Marriage bliss is the new covenant. It's marriage bliss now. And this is the thing. You know, everybody's pretty in the future. It's always in the future. Oh, get married to Jesus. No, it's happened. He swallowed you whole like a pumpkin pie. And he didn't ask your permission. He didn't ask your permission. Whoa, we're going to get this. This is for all creation because all creation's grown in to enter into the glorious freedom of the sons of God. Freedom from what? Death and decay. They'd never say that in church. They think it's about waving a banner and blowing a shofar. (laughs) Many shofars I've heard blown sound a bit farty. (laughs) They're far far too intense. So Jesus came to break open a new timeline, a new possibility, a new action, a new course of consciousness on the earth. You know, when you read Athanasius, how many of you guys read Athanasius? He said before Jesus came along, he said there was an idol on every doorstep, every post, everywhere you looked. The world was full of idols. Athanasius wrote in the first century, I think it was, he said Jesus scandalized the idols out of the earth. You know, he formed such a new consciousness that even Rome collapsed under the weight of it. Empires fell because of it. Wow. 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 So he's breaking up in a new timeline. And I tell you a mystery, a mysterion. So let's go back to Melchizedek a second. In the likeness of a Melchizedek, there rises another priest according to the power of an endless life, by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. The word for that means not subject to destruction, endless, incapable of being dissolved, decomposed, undone, or destroyed. There's a Melchizedek order coming that's incapable of being destroyed. There's a Melchizedek, there's something going to happen that's so profound. It says nations will come to the brightness of your rising. And the way that that happens is God starts releasing a prophetic message like this, preparing the way of the Lord. Every time he's moved, he's released messengers. He's releasing people like Liz and Nancy and Kirby Delana on and this, this guy we were with, Andre, in Turkey. And all over the world, we're not connected. We're not, I, I didn't know God had talked to you about it. I didn't know God had talked to you about it. We compared notes and we were like, we're twins. It's like we got the same dad. And I was just in Turkey with this guy, Andre, and he was telling me all the downloads he'd had. And they started having people in their meetings. I don't know if you women would want this, but some of the women who've had menopause can have babies again. I don't know if you want that or not. But I can tell you something now. I love John Paul Jackson. John Paul Jackson. God connected me to John Paul Jackson through Enoch. He was taken up into heaven in a throne room encounter. And an angel came up to him and said, There is in Romans chapter 4 a a message that has not been honored, which is the hidden truth that will be the defining characteristic of the coming move. 
in Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, for everybody that's confused, it, we've already been there. It's the just shall live by faith, and it's all about righteousness. But it's more. It's about the regeneration. Of the, it says he counted his body, even though it was dead, that God was fully capable of renewing his and Sarah's body. And then there's this line at the end of chapter 4 where it says, this is written for us. Everybody's read that passage and skipped that. They've read the bit about righteousness. They've not read the bit where it says, the hay, Abraham, the hay is the breath. It is the ruach. It is the life force. It is the window of worlds. It is grace. It is his name going into the DNA. <laughs> Woo. Come on. He's saying, come on. Godfrey's on it. Anyone with me right now? Yeah. Anyone with me? Are you seeing something that he's the father of faith? And, and it was credited to him because why? Because he believed that God could give him a new body. He believed that God could regenerate the body. Sarah believed that. And that was what the message was in Rome 4. It says this is an example. All the old covenant is an example. If, you know, I love, I'm going to quote Bill Johnson again. But think about all the glory on Moses. And it said he had the ministry of condemnation. Bill Johnson says this. We cannot let Moses be the high point of human history. <laughs> and Moses would come with a glowing face. Nancy's glowed. And others here have glowed. And a whole nightclub of witchy people, coven people got saved. The woman who led it got blinded by the light. And you led that guy in Tibet or whatever, that new ager Buddhist... Was he the second highest one? And he couldn't see your face, could he? He could just see light. He could just see light. Ah, wow, I'm nearly done, guys. I'm only on page one of my notes. And Enoch saw this, you know, Enoch saw this. And I met Enoch in 2010, and he gave me this wine from the book of Isaiah. I didn't know it was the book of Isaiah until I drank it, and it was oaky wine. And the verse that infused me was, They shall be oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. They shall rebuild the ruined places, be called repair of the breach, and repair the desolation of generations. There's lots of stuff in that. They'll, they'll rebuild the ancient ruins, so we'll, we're going to discover all the old technology. We're going to find out what all those things did. That's why everybody's talking about them. We'll repair the structure, but the desolation of generations is genetics. I didn't realize this. That's the recover all, restore all. I came to restore what was lost, the genetic structure, the epigenetic structure that contains the record of death. So, for example, if you've got asthma, you've got a gene for asthma. He wants to rebuild and restore what was lost. You take the gene out, you're immune. You're immune. It's genetic engineering. The Lord's genetic engineering. But it's okay for technology to do it. They're starting to do it. They did use CRISPR for sickle cell anemia. And they cured this person by just taking the gene out. We did it. We did a genetic engineering on your granddaughter, didn't we? And she was in such a condition. Do you want to share that story now before we land it? I don't want to take away from what he's saying. Yeah, so basically, she had a 3,000-year-old disease that was Your genetically, yes, my granddaughter, and she was literally, her, her, her skeleton was falling apart in her body, and all of her connective tissues were being completely dismantled, her heart, her lungs, everything, her stomach, she couldn't even eat food because the muscles that moved her stomach uh, would just not stop moving. Anyway, we did, we got a word from the Lord that we could actually go in and extract the, the, the genomes that had caused that disease. And actually, the week that we did that, this is, this is a word for everybody here, and you can get it right now, okay? The week that we did that, they had just declared that her life was over, and they should just sit, take her home, lay her down, make her comfortable, 
and we went into the heavens, and we did, yes, her brain fluid, all of her brain fluid, all of her spinal fluid was coming out her nose, coming out her mouth. They had plastic bags full of it. My daughter actually videoed it and sent it to her doctor, and the doctor said, get her to the emergency room right this minute, or she'll be dead before midnight. We went in, and we actually extracted the dangerous genomes that could only be passed down to a descendant of a Second Temple Ashkenazi Jewish priest. And that's the only descendancy that carries that gene. And when we went and we extracted it, oh my God, she just got married a couple weeks ago. And the girl, the girl who is never gonna have children and never ever get married, now here's the word for you. She was totally healed after seven days of every ligament in her body being stretched to the max. She was healed on 2, 22, 22, and she was 22. And the Lord said, I've now opened the door for my people to the door called 222, which is the door of the frequency of the heartbeat of God's love. A few, when she got married, I said, I want to pay for her veil. When the bill came for the veil, it was $222. When it came time for the gift, I said, Lord, what gift? He goes, two, 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 two. And that's what she got. The issue is now we also can access that door, which is the door to the unfettered, eternal, everlasting, sovereign love of God. Amen. Wow, Nancy, you know, got a group of us together. She planned it for months that we were going to ascend and pray over her. And we were going to do genetic engineering in the spirit, quantum entanglement over a distance. We were all in different countries. We did it on Zoom. But we were in the spirit and we all saw the same thing from around the world. We saw the altar. We deconstructed the altar. We rebuilt a DNA. She started vibrating that moment and vibrated for seven days until she was completely miraculously healed. We're not joking with this stuff. I know it seems far out, but I'm on a quest with what I'm preaching on. I know what the law of honor does and focus and desire. I've seen the power of it. When I went for the prophetic, I got it. When I went for the Holy Spirit, I got it. When we started to go for the wildfire in Wales, we got it. We went out on the streets, led hundreds of people to the law. We did wildfire gatherings all over the country. When I wanted to engage the mystical, we got it. I went after Ian Clayton and other teachers. I got them in. I'm telling you now, all of that still stands but life is swallowing death. And there's a realm of life that what we honor, we're going to honor life because life is the natural logic of heaven on earth. When we've been saying, your kingdom come, your will be done. I came that you might have life. What is heaven? The realm of life. What have we been pushing out? Death. Or to quote Mashiach, he said, I will build my legislative assembly, my government, my ecclesia, called out ekleo, called out to have a name. And the gates of death will not prevail against them. Destroying death in its every form over technology, over culture, over media, over music, over every area is what we're here for. And it says we will be like leaven that will work our way through everything. Architecture, design, currencies, economics. There's not a single area on earth that will be resistant to the kingdom. For the kingdom will leaven the whole loaf and it will transform the whole earth until the whole earth is filled with the knowledge of the the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the seas. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. To restore the celebrative constancy of the Trinity and wisdom in ecstasy on planet joy. If you want to know what planet you're living on on this earth, it's called planet joy. It's where the dance floor is. It's where the new Jerusalem is going to be. It's where the glory of God is going to be seen. Planet, welcome to planet joy. And I tell you what, it's the end times of grumpy. It's the end times of sickness. It's the end times of death. It's the end times of the prophetic movement because something better is coming, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. 
who is the full package, the full loaf, the full building. And we are living stones, not dying stones. We are living stones. Living stones, living stones. Ah! 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 And it's only just begun. It's only just begun. It's only just begun. Oh, and we will tremble at his goodness in the last days. Wow. Wow. But now, you have discovered yourselves to be located in. Ah. Wow, I love it in the mirror. It says in Colossians 3, pursue with diligence the consequences of your co-inclusion. <laughs> there are consequences to the gospel. And we're about to discover what that really means. Amen. We're going to sing the entanglement song. But I just want to just move in something right now that the Lord showed me to do. Before you do it, Godfrey, quick story. I used to take all the speakers to this cafe in Cardiff. I felt God's glory there. I thought they were Christians. After going there for a long time, it turned out they were Muslims. <laughs> but they had a lot of glory. So one day I went there, and the guy who ran it, he looked unhappy. He said, I said, are you okay? I was paying the bill. He said, I've damaged my back in an accident. I said, listen, I know you're a Muslim. No one has to know we're doing this. <laughs> but I said, if you turn around, just put your back against the counter. I'll lean across and give you some shaka bam bam. <laughs> so he looked around. His wife wasn't there, so it was okay. She was a good cook, mind. Wow. Woo, she could make an omelette fly. It was beautiful. I leaned over the counter. He gets healed, right? So this is cool. So God heals him. Just an ordinary thing. So sometime after that, I go there and his family's there. He's there this time. He doesn't look good and he hasn't been there for a while. And I say to him, are you all right? He says, I got a, my heart is got a disease where it's breaking up. There's nothing they can do about it. And his family were all standing there, and they all knew that I'd healed his back. And my brother Mark was with me, and it was just going from having a coffee to suddenly. Do you know what I mean? So I said to him, you remember when I leaned across the counter and healed your back? Could I pray for your heart? So I leaned over, and I touched his heart, and I prayed, and I felt nothing. No glory. And then I felt love. And something bigger came. Something bigger, 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 bigger came. And I grabbed him and I said, I love you. And out of me came life. And everyone felt it. My brother felt it. He was going, whoa. And he got totally healed. He went, he, next time I saw him, he said, they're calling me the miracle man at the, at the hospital. He said, my heart has rebuilt itself. Love is going to create life. Love is going to create life. Love is an attack on death. Love is for love. Now, if you've got a heart condition, put your hand on your heart, and I want you to put one hand up. Now, everybody, look around at people that got heart conditions, and we're going to release love over them right now. So I want you to engage the frequency of immortality that's already in you, which works through love. Yahweh, I thank you right now that you are rebuilding. Set me as a seal upon your heart. Set me as a seal upon your heart. For your love is stronger than death. Right now, restoration of hearts. Restoration of hearts in Jesus' name. Now breathe in, breathe in love. You are loved. Rebuilding hearts, unblocking hearts. Resetting heart rhythms. 
whoa, breathe, guys, breathe. It's like we've all gone so intense all of a sudden. Breathe. Life swallows death. Now release the frequency of love over that person. Father, I thank you that you loved them. You loved them beyond measure. You loved them beyond measure. It says, I will give you a new heart. I will give you a new heart to put a new heart within you. In the heartbeat, Godfrey. <laughs> a lot of glory on the heartbeat. Wow. Just receive it. Breathe it in now. Breathe deeply, healing virtue. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. Okay. Thank you, Father. Woo. Breathe in. We're going to sing this entanglement song. Just give me one more minute because we're opening up a realm right now. I was in India, and the Lord told me there would be a woman with an issue of blood. She had problems in that part of her body. Now, out of intimidation, I didn't speak it out. There was hundreds of people there, but she got healed anyway. Because grace is aggressive forgiveness. That's the message translation. It says, the law cannot stand up against the aggressive forgiveness called grace. We release aggressive forgiveness over your body right now. If you need something happened in your women's parts, receive it right now. We release aggressive forgiveness called grace over your body. We release life. We release hay. We release the breath of life into your body that your body will come back into agreement with the blueprint of your design. For he came that you might have life in abundance till it overflows. Where death has cast a shadow, we shall see a great light. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Step up into it now. Step up into that place of, of ascension now. Where he quickens your mortal body. Grab it now like the woman of the issue of blood. When I was in India, that woman wanted the miracle. She got it in spite of me. Grab it now, the realm of life. 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 Now, if you want life, grab it now. Grab more life. Let's pull on life because what we honor, we're going to attract. We are honoring life, quickening my mortal body. That means regenerating, reinvigorating, renewing. Renewing your knees because it says those who wait on the Lord will run. Those who cover in the Lord, those who entangle in God will run. If you've got stiff knees, just begin to receive oil in your knees. Oh, move those knees. Begin to connect with the realm of life and immortality. Who wants length of days and renewal of the body? Who wants untethering from genetic disease? Genetic disease. Whoa! Whoa! Clear, stand up. Right now, clear. Arise and shine. You're receiving life. You are receiving life because those who are faithful, a little are given much, both now and the age to come. And the Lord, show me your face in the Spirit. And He said He's going to bless you and keep you and cause the light of His face to shine upon you and give you peace. For He has found you to be faithful and He has crowned you with glory and honor. You are being dignified by the gospel. For those he justified, he also glorified, raising up to a heavenly dignity. Oh, come on, come on. We're going to entangle into the future. Let's leave the dark days behind. Let's leave the dog days behind. Let's break up with death. Let's break up with aging. Let's break up with sickness. We go for the genetics of Jesus. Whoa. Yes, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Step into it. Step into it. Hey. 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 Whoa, come on in the life pool. Come out of the front, guys. Into life. Into life. Whoa, into life. The way of life. The way of life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. Entangled Your life is my life. 
Wonder-working power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood of Jesus. Life is in the blood. Life is in the blood, and we have the blood. Wow. There is power. <laughs> wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. <laughs> Where you see the mark of blood, it says death will pass by the house. Where you see the mark of blood, the spirit of death will bypass. Whoa, there's power. There is power. Wonder work in power. In the blood, in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb. Whoa! There is power. Wow, there is power. Woo! Woo! Whoa! Yes, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Where there is blood, the spirit of death will pass by. <laughs> Come on, let's enjoy the blood for a second. There is power. Wonder working power. the land. 